Well, good afternoon. I'm Hugh Aljo. I'm a pastor and range consultant here at the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation here in Ardmore, Oklahoma. And what I'll be talking about today is the ultra-high stock density grazing, and in particular, some of the precautions before implementation. You know, over the last couple of years, we've seen a you know a increased interest in, in mob grazing or ultra-high stock density grazing, especially as we begin to read some of the, the uh, the media type information, things that are in the grazing magazines, the, the, the cattle magazines. And I, as a pasture and range consultant, and I'm sure other professionals, we're getting more and more inquiries about is there a benefit to uh, this, this uh, high stock density grazing or mob grazing, and a little bit more information, asking more information about it. And what, what I've done here today is prepare a little bit of a presentation not to deter people that are interested in, in trying to pursue it, but to add some precautions to it because as someone who ran a ranch for 10 years and did utilize high stock density grazing, uh, and today I work with several producers that successfully employ high stock density and ultra high stock density grazing, there are some precautions that, that practitioners need to keep in mind. So first off, you know, let me just kind of set, you know, set the stage by using what I call my definition of ultra high stock density. And that is the management tool of using grazing livestock in much higher than normal concentrations to achieve landscape-focused objectives through animal impact, resulting in a long-term goal of enhanced soils, forages, and livestock production. That's long-winded uh, means of saying that using livestock as a tool through their grazing, through their, 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 their uh, trampling and some of their, their behavioral aspects, in order to create some desired landscape outcomes. But it has to be practiced uh, with, with care and some precaution. Now, to get started right, we probably need to, get to be familiar with some term terminology that we see within uh, grazing management circles. First off is just stock density, and that's not to be confused with stock and rate. The stock density is the concentration of animals on a given subunit of land at a given moment. It's purely a function of the size of the paddock, and the number and size of the animals within it, and usually uh, communicated in terms of pounds of live weight per acre, at least here in the United States. The animal impact is the actions of the grazing animal, the grazing, the trampling, the defecation, uh, the, the, the milling around that occurs when the animals are grazing, especially when you put them into uh, high concentrations, and what that impact has on the soils and the plants. The herd effect is the effect on the plants and soils that a large number of animals have on it bunched so closely together that their behavior changes. It's the result of that concentrated animal impact. And what I mean by, by behavior is that when you're using electric fences, in most instances you would be, is that the fence becomes the predator in that predator-prey type of re relationship that we find with wild ungulates that we find uh, in in, uh, in Africa or may have been here in the United States for, for years ago. And what that creates is a milling uh, effect within the herd. If you've ever had your cattle uh, bunched into a trap or when you're trying to work the cattle, put them in a smaller pen, you see that that, that that behavior with the animals actually come together and the ones on the outside are trying to work their way in and the ones on the end are trying to work their way out. When you bunch them so closely that that behavior changes and you begin to see that milling effect you know you've probably reached that kind of critical mass that you're looking for to uh, end up with the herd effect. Typically, ultra-high stock density is going to be expressed in terms of pounds of animal live weight per acre in a given unit of time. Stock densities are usually in excess of 100,000 pounds of live weight per acre. Below that, so you usually, I usually consider that to be a high stock density. Now, what's normal and what where, you know, where do you really mark the point of being at high stock density? It all depends on the area, region that you're at, what you consider your normal stocking rate. Stocking rate has not changed, just the concentration of the animals because you're putting them in smaller and smaller paddocks. But when you get over 100,000 pounds and often upwards of a million pounds of live weight per acre, now we know we're in the high stock density range. And if you look in the, in the popular press, you're seeing a lot of uh, people that uh, are utilizing it that uh, are claiming to try to reach or uh, are claiming to reach that million pounds per acre. And we do a demo demonstration here when we've got our interns here during the summer in order to to uh, demonstrate exactly what this looks like. And 
and it affects your movement of cattle about every 20 to 30 minutes because of the concentration. And if you figure at 100,000 pounds of live weight per acre, you figure that they are eating about 3% of their body weight. That's 3,000 3, pounds of dry matter that has to be available to graze. And we're not going to graze 100%. We're going to graze somewhere between half and maybe a third. So if you double 3,000, 6,000 pounds, or triple it, 9,000 pounds, that's how much forage dry matter has to be available uh, for the animals to begin grazing. So if you think about it from that perspective, there's not too many pastures that are going to have that much where you can graze and move them uh, once a day. It's going to take multiple moves during the day in order to get the intake that the livestock need, needs it when you get to these excessive uh, uh, high stock densities. So it requires moving the grazing livestock to fresh pastures multiple times a day. And so you kind of figure out that's why we do this little demonstration when the interns are here. Uh, you have cheap labor <laughs> and you get to utilize them uh, through this demonstration during during a period of time where, when you have that labor available to you. And they have to be there at a timely manner. So it's just one of the things we'll get back to here in a minute. So mob grazing versus ultra high stock density grazing. Is there a difference? And technically the mob is only referring to the to the herd itself. You know, that's the it's the, the, the grazing animals, and they can be of various numbers, stock densities, even of different species, but they're all put together in one large herd. And usually that's what it means, is that uh, it's a larger herd, or at least herds larger than normal. When I was running a ranch, we had you know about 1,500 head of uh, breeding age animals, and you'd have herds that would be anywhere from upwards of about 500 head. But where do you draw that line between the large? You know, it may, may depend on where you're at. It could be a a couple of hundred, it could be uh, uh, up to 800,000 animals or more, but most of the times when we see here in the United States, we're usually talking about a mob of several hundred animals at a time. And the mob grazing can span both high and ultra high stock densities, but they're typically done with, with the large herds. And it's the large, her large herds that provides that, that uh, animal impact that you're really desiring when you get into the ultra high stock density grazing. Now, whether you whether you uh, agree with some of the science or some of the aspects that Alan Savory has uh, in his book, Holistic Resource Management, it is still probably that book probably the best resource just to better understand what what uh, this type of grazing management implies. Uh, and if you get into the specifics of the grazing management within that book, and there's other books that you can look at, Jim Garrish's book on the uh, uh, um, uh, management intensive grazing is another one that's an excellent resource to, to study. But uh, we need to understand what those tools of grazing management are and what we're trying to apply when we do this uh, high stock density grazing. You know, REST, uh, Alan claims, is probably the most misunderstood tool. It's the one that's the least used, and because of that, it is, it is, he considers it the most misunderstood in most of our grazing, uh, grazing circles. Grazing is the most abused tool because we tend to overutilize our pastures and grazing. And that's what we're really trying to manage. When we, begin, when we focus on this multi-paddock type grazing, we're beginning to apply grazing management and the tools of rest and grazing. And before we jump off too far into to the sulfur high stock density grazing, you know, more recovery on pastures can occur with just the proper implementation of these tools of rest and grazing. And that's where I, I, I tend to recommend people start. If they're interested in trying to move to some of the high stock density, gra stock, high stock density grazing or mob grazing, the first place to start is let's just begin to understand and utilize the tools of rest and grazing in a successful manner. Then we'll begin to look at what animal impact can do as a tool. And that's probably the least used because we usually consider it just a byproduct of having grazing animals in a pasture. But it can be used to, to to uh, transform our landscapes when properly applied. And that's through the tool of, of stock density, which is the most underutilized tool in grazing management. And it's kind of like having a bunch of tools in your toolbox and knowing which ones do you need to use when. And you can't use them all at the same time, and they all have different purposes. And the stock density is one that, when we use it, can have multiple, multiple uh, effects. But we've got to realize there's two different modes that we have to work with, and we'll talk about those here shortly.